CTE, what do we know about it? What do we not know? Can it happen from just one hit? And then what about sub-concussive impacts? Now, in the complete concussion course, I give a lecture on this that's about two hours long. So uh, I'm going to have to really give the Coles Notes versions on this. CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, is a neurodegenerative condition that is believed to be not confirmed to be, believed to be related to concussions and or repetitive head trauma. So it's been both ways. Uh, it started out as just concussions. They thought it was leading to CTE. But what happened was the researchers who were leading this um, research at the University of Boston found they had some people that were donated as controls that never had any concussions in their history, but they had a history of playing contact sports and they found CTE in those brains. So then they thought, well, maybe it's not just concussions, maybe it's repetitive head trauma. And in my opinion, there's a lot more maybes that should be added to that list. Maybe it's pain killing medication. Maybe it's a normal process of life. We don't have very many control brains. So that's one of the major concerns with CTE is that we don't know enough about regular humans, regular life um, as to whether or not this is something and how common it is found in the general um, population. So it's believed to be due to head trauma, but there have been cases where they found CTE in the absence of head trauma. So now that calls into question the entire idea behind it being related to head trauma. So, so far, CTE and its relationship to concussions and or subconcussive impacts is purely 100% theoretical. I'm not saying that it's not the case. It may very well be the case, but we still have to prove that and I think that's gonna take some time to do. Now, what they find inside the brain is a protein called tau protein and it's it's a hyperphosphorylated form of tau protein tau is occurs normally inside uh, nerve tissue and it's a it's it helps with the support structure of the cell now upon injury to nerve tissue that tau can accumulate aggregate and become these hyperphosphorylated um, little globules called tau protein deposits so it injury to nerve tissue can be a catalyst for tau deposition. So the theory makes sense. But so can things like chronic inflammation. So can things like um, opioid medications. So opiates are known to increase the risk of having tau deposition. Now how many former professional athletes or current professional athletes are taking painkillers on a regular basis? So then at the end of their career, at the end of their life, we find tau protein in the brain. How do we know that it's not due to years of utilizing opioids? There was a study done looking at former NFL players, and they found that in former NFL players, 70% of them admitted to using opiate medications on a regular basis during their playing careers, and more than half of them identified, self-identified themselves as being abusers of opioid medications. So how do we know it's not that? Well, we don't. We need more research to continue to be done. Um, there's, there's potentially cognitive impairments, memory impairments, and other things that go that people are reporting are happening to them. Yet in a number of studies, and I've talked about this before, in a number of studies, and there was just a big one done in Buffalo, and they looked at all these different measures. They looked at imaging. They looked at cognitive tests. They looked at uh, physical testing, like balance and reaction time and that type of stuff, and they found that the group that had a history of concussions and, and played in the NHL and NFL that were actually reporting, they came in saying, yes, I have cognitive impairments. Yes, I don't feel right. There's something wrong with me. And then they compared them to a group of former um, swimmers and cyclists and non-contact athletes and they found that there was absolutely no difference between the groups in terms of their cognitive function, their imaging findings, their anything. The only difference was that the group that was the former NFL and NHL players had higher anxiety and they had a higher belief that they were impaired. So how much of that is driven by the media hype of the media basically convincing the entire world that concussions lead to 
you know, long-term neurodegenerative conditions. Um, and even sports like football can lead to long-term neurodegenerative conditions. And how much of that now plays into the psyche of former athletes that think, holy shit, I played football, I played hockey, I don't quite feel right. And then it starts becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. And then, you know, there's there's so many variables in this right now. We just don't know enough about it. Um, you know, I could probably ramble on all day about this. But generally at this point in time, can it happen from one hit? Highly, highly unlikely. Although, theoretically, we don't know. Could be possible. It may not even be due to hits, so we don't know. Um, and then what about subconcussive impacts? In my opinion, if head trauma is related to um, CTE or a causal factor of CTE. Uh, I believe there to be some sort of threshold, um, and I don't know this to be true. This is just purely a theory, theory based on my uh, opinion, and I kind of think about it this way is, you know, if I'm to hit myself in the arm like this repeatedly, is my arm eventually just going to break? Probably not. Okay, it'll get annoying after a while, but I don't think I'm actually going to break my arm. Now, if I started really hammering my arm, maybe I could lead to some cellular damage around that, maybe some remodeling, some restructuring of you know the muscle tissue and bone tissue as a result of that trauma. And if I really smash it, my arm will break. So there's this this continuum, I believe, and I believe the same thing to be due uh, in. I believe there to be the same issue with concussion, is at low, low impact magnitudes, like let's say heading a soccer ball, um, is that enough to result in any type of cellular remodeling or any type of subclinical threshold trauma? Uh, in my opinion, likely not, but we don't know. Then when you get into more forceful impacts, like let's say um, like a boxing fight where you're getting punched in the face a bunch of times, the force is a little bit stronger. Is that leading to damage? Possibly. And then you get into the concussion level where you actually affect cellular change, potentially creating microstructural damage, potentially creating, you know, that is kind of a continuum of injury severity, subconcussive to whatever. So I don't know. But I just I feel that that makes logical sense to me in terms of the impact magnitudes. So I would say that if you've had one concussion before, it would be very, very highly unlikely that you would develop CTE. If you've had a number of concussions before, uh, there's so many questions that I would have to ask you, such as, you know, how many? Uh, not that it would it would necessarily matter how many, but how close together? were those injuries. So there's some evidence to show that the, it's not necessarily the number of concussions you get, but how close together they are, what type of recovery you had between each one. Uh, I would want to know kind of like last week, what's your diet, right? So one of the leading theories on this is that the injuries themselves lead to an inflammatory response in the brain, activation of microglia, and that activation of microglia now in some other stuff we've been looking at can impair um, uh, gut permeability and make it more permeable, which then leads to greater inflammatory processes that continue that catalyst, that cascade, and then you get this chronic inflammatory uh, type of thing. So how much of CTE is due to not only the presence of head trauma, but then head trauma followed by uh, a high inflammatory diet, uh, alcohol and drugs um, and other things that keep this inflammatory cycle going and keep the cascade of brain degeneration happening, right? So there, I think there's a lot of things that go into somebody's life that can potentially lead to a neurodegenerative condition. Head trauma may be one, but we don't know. We need a lot more evidence on this. I think that the media has done us all a disservice by perpetuating this idea without having all the results and has now created this fear propagation that leads to the anxiety that leads to the same symptoms that somebody with CTE would experience. And so now it becomes very cloudy to figure out, do I just have a generalized anxiety disorder or do I actually have some sort of impairment that's caused by this, right? So uh, I think there's a lot of stuff that still needs to be figured out there.